This chapter focuses almost entirely on Bogey Woods and Takamaru and obviously their fight, but we get to see more about Bogey Woods and his powers. Toriko, gourmet number 79, host with the most. Man, Takamaru boy, he is hardcore and his bogey is something else. Well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the nerd nation. I, as always, am Jim, and I'm here to bring you another review on the awesome and awe-inspiring and just really vividly detailed and explained and realized tale of Toriko. Our last chapter saw us with, obviously, the shit is starting to hit the fan from every which way. And we know that everybody's starting to square off against each other. We know that uh, that Match and Barry Gammon are going to be going up one-on-one -on -one against each other. And then, of course, Toriko and Tommy Rod. But really where we were left hanging was uh, was, was Takamaru uh, having used his bottle opener move on Bogey Woods. He winds up knocking the shell off, or, or, or however you want to explain it, uh, that Bogey was inhabiting as his host. And, and that's where things left off. And that's where things pick up. And honestly, this is, a, this is a nice, explosive way to end a volume over here. This ends up volume 9. And, um, and, and it's cool because we get a really nice description on Bogey Woods and what his actual power is. At first, Takamaru goes and, well, first of all, we wind up seeing he can do some weird shit with his hands where he's like bends around his fist and hand backwards. And when he goes to throw a punch, he can like move it and then like spin it backwards. And basically, uh, it throws off the person that's trying to figure out the trajectory of it because he doesn't move in normal ways, right? So anyway, he talks about how he's going to take him over as a host and add him to his collection of hosts. And we find out about, I don't know, maybe five, six, seven, eight pages into the chapter as Bogey's explaining that, that because Takamaro is like, yeah, whatever, dude. So basically you go and just take and dress, you play dress up, you go and you take somebody else's skin. And he's like, no, 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 no. Take a better look at that corpse, you know. And uh, and it, first of all, we find out that he's he's been with them kind of undercover ever since, uh, ever since the bar back in, in Gourmet City or, or um, you know, and and he, he was he was I think he was he was the fat guy is what he was, and then he um and I forgot that guy's name though for the life of me now, but um he was him and then of course he took over the host as, as one of these guys one of these security guys or whatever, and uh, and they're both subpar to him. But here the thing that was really cool that they explained is that he doesn't just take over the person he doesn't clone the person he doesn't inhabit his but he actually goes and he comes in the only thing he replaces I mean all the person's skin organs. Uh, voice, face, all that stuff, it's intact, right? The only thing that changes is he, it's his skeleton. So he basically goes in to, to a person and he inhabits them as a host and he has their voice, their mannerisms, their walk, their moves, their knowledge, everything. All their brain, all that shit stays intact. He's basically just, I don't know how he does it and how it even can make sense if you think about it because what is he then in, in essence you know he's able to go and basically just just replace just the bones in a person but the thing is is that it's not just a skin suit he's not just playing some weird you know dress up game right and that's what takamaro says this weird macabre dress up game it's not that at all it's he can straight up walk talk and act like get past security and everything else because he is that other person and then he goes and he says about how he's got a dozen of these these hosts already you know and they go and they show, you know, like this, these these cases, and they got this big hulking looking dude that looks like the abomination from Hulk, and other, and he's talking about how he's got twelve. He's like, I have a dozen, but now a baker's dozen, which anybody who doesn't know what a baker's dozen is, a uh, baker's back in the olden days, and, and even now they'll still do it. They give a baker's dozen when you uh, when you get a dozen donuts, a uh, dozen rolls, a dozen anything, which most things are sold in half dozen or a dozen in bakeries. The, the, a baker's dozen is they give you an extra one. They give you an extra donut. They give you an extra roll. They give you an extra whatever, a cookie, whatever it is that you're getting from them. A dozen, they give you that 13th one for free, right? Uh, and it's just sort of, that. It's just that's where the term came from, for those of you that don't know. So many of you probably do, but some of you may not. I don't know. So something that uh, I, I learned when I was younger, but um, it was honestly it's something that a lot of people that I tell it to, they're like, what the hell is the baker's dozen anyway? You know, they think it's just some sort of funny slang term. And it kind of is, but it actually has a meaning behind it means 13 so uh so he's he wants to add him to his and they start you know they start going at it and takamaru winds up taking a beating during the whole thing toriko goes and he's over there 
He's like, man, these guys are way overmatched. These are Gourmet Corp's elite guys. You know, he's talking about Match and Takamaru being way overmatched. And that, no pun intended, because obviously Match and overmatched. But um, just like there was no pun intended with uh, Ice, Tommy Gun, and Tommy uh, shooting at Tommy. But Tommy Rod goes, he's like, hey, remember who you're fighting? You're fighting me. I can't wait. And he's just like spewing out these disgusting insects. And I'm not even going to get into like how does he go and like barf out like a 40 foot insect or 20 foot insect out of his thin, frail little body. Whatever, man. I'm going to suspend disbelief for it because it's a cool series and I like it and they've done a great job of explaining many things to me, but this is one of those things that you're just like, what? And even Toriko's like, come on, man, you know, there's just like, really? There's like a hundred bugs flying everywhere, you know? It's like, come on, dude, how about a fair fight, right? Uh, but, you know, that's a little too much to ask for uh, at this point anyway. So then it winds up going back to, of course, Takamaru and, you know, him actually going, you know, going toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with this, with this Bogey Woods. And Bogey winds up coming at him with what, uh, what it really, it, to me, it looks like, um, I wouldn't say it looks like the spike punch because that hits in the exact same spot. It looks kind of like in One Piece, like Luffy's like Gatling gun move or his storm, gum gum storm move. Because he just goes and throws a bunch of like weird trajectory fists like super fast at Takamaru and just basically just waylays him, man, knocks him back. And then he goes over and he grabs him. He's, it looks like he's going to go and he's, you know, getting up close to him. And, uh, and he winds up, he knocks off his little, uh, Takamaro's kind of hair hangs over the one side of his face. So you can't see his one eye. It's actually his left eye. I'm sorry. You can't see his left eye. And then he's kind of got this bandana down over it and it keeps the hair pushed down over it. Well, anyway, this bandana winds up getting knocked off and then Bogey goes, and this is another thing we find out about Takamaro. He says something about, I, I don't want that body now. That's a cursed eye. So there's something about his eye, and you see that it's obviously it's different, the left eye from the right eye. It looks, I don't know, almost like reptilian or something like that. But nonetheless, so uh, we find out, too, that Takamaro's got some kind of, you know, he, he's got some demons in the closet, too. Takamaro, though, then goes and gets back up after he winds up getting knocked down by Bogey, because Bogey then turns his attention away, and he's like, you know what, I'll just, I'll just take over somebody else's body, maybe the gangster guy or, you know, maybe even Toriko. And um, so Takamaro gets back up, and this is where the volume goes to end up and like that. And he's just like, you know what? And he actually says some cool things over here. I'll just read them out to you. Because he talks about what he winds up talking about, which is actually pretty cool stuff, man, I think. Um, and there's some things that I think are profound. But anyway, the rent for living in gratitude is too high for the, the likes of you. Uh, for, for you to pay. I'm sorry. Yeah, let me read that again. The rent for living in gratitude is too high for the likes of you to pay. And, you know, he kind of just does this fist thing. And this dude's just, like, laughing at him. Ha, 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 what are you talking about? Blah, 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 right? So then when we go and we get this whole thing, and he goes and gets ready and gets, you know, he's getting down to do it. He says, I can't foresee the trajectory of his attacks. So victory is going to go to, the you know, that one who strikes first, right? And Takamaru goes and gets down and dirty, man. But I like how he says something about along the lines of, uh, this eye was given to me here. The body is support. Oh, here. But this body is supported by the love of another, and I'll never let you inhabit it. So, you know, the eye he's saying may appear defective to you. So whatever that is, there's a, there's a good story behind that. I want to know what it is. But then he goes and he kind of goes and just, you know, hulks up for his move. And then he goes and does his bottle opener move. And that's how the thing ends in this double page spread. And Bogey looks like, I don't know if that's a look of like, I just shit myself. I don't know if that's a look of like, you just pinched my balls. I don't know if that's a look of like, you know, fear or you can't really tell. He's just kind of like, huh? just sort of like, a, a just a, it doesn't know. I don't know if it's disbelief or what, but I know Takumaro, man, he's going, he's going to 11, boy. He is going, he is ratcheting it up. And then we get the to be continued and going to obviously look forward to jumping into the next volume to see what the hell transpires and goes down with that so all in all a very cool chapter very fun and action-packed and, and i certainly enjoy it and, and again i really just appreciate the detail and the artwork uh it's it, it's very nice i really really like it i mean just uh, the shading and the shadows and everything else it's very difficult to draw something in black and white and really make it pop and look good and stand out. Uh, but he does, does an excellent job. Just does an excellent job of it. So I, I definitely like it. So Mitsutoshi. I always, you know, I always like forget what the, you know, I, I, I have trouble pronouncing some of the names. So then I'll, I'll go and I'll just kind of avoid them altogether. But uh, very, very good stuff. So my chapter question for you, though, brothers and sisters, is uh, thoughts on Takamaru. The Cursed Eye, of course, and then just Bogey Woods in general and the ability that he has not to just possess a body, not to just mimic a body, but to actually go in and the body still remains intact for the most part. So the memories, the knowledge, all the stuff that he gets from being, you know, uh, making that his host, 
but he just kind of replaces the bones, you know. Just give me your thoughts on that in the comments down below. Feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button if you should think that I deserve it, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. We'll look forward to catching all of you in the next fun nation. Please remember to follow me on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and my other channel too.